My guest today is Chadwick Collins, a local father going through a divorce in Tarrant County's 233rd District Courts. Chad, your story is interesting. It's kind of an example of how protective orders can be uh, misused by family court uh, judges um, through false allegations. Uh, last year, Associate Judge Kate Stone um, issued a 10-year protective order, and these orders have been uh, also at different times signed by uh, Kenneth Newell uh, that were based on allegations that you were stalking your wife uh, throughout the divorce proceeding. Come to find out um, she was placing a tracking device on your car so she could anticipate where you're going. How did you learn she was placing, a, that she placed a tracking device on your car? Well, um, April, I believe it was April the 3rd, um, she followed me to mm -hmm. a Walmart here in Abilene. And after that, um, a process server came by my apartment a few days later and served me, but I knew she didn't know my address. I never updated my address. I used a different address. Um, the process server told me that they got my address from my wife. Mm. And I said, well, you shouldn't know my address. But people have been telling me, you should check your car or check your phone because she knows where you're at all the time. Mm. So I checked my, my car and I immediately found a tracking device under it. And I called APD and they took that device. Before you found these uh, devices, um, your, your wife would uh, just find you in, in random places and you couldn't figure out. But then she would also file police reports saying you were stalking her. Can you just explain kind of her motive? Um, yes. Um, like I said, there was the one um, time at Walmart mm -hmm. um, all the way here in Abilene, which is two hours away, which was mm -hmm. very odd. I immediately dropped my stuff and left. Um, but she would she knew everywhere that I was at. Yeah. And she would would file these reports and I would just get arrested. Mm. They no phone calls from any officers, no detectives, mm -hmm. nothing. I would just get arrested. Mm -hmm. And I was arrested a four time a total of four times. And mm -hmm. there was a total of 15 false reports. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've read all these. Um and so recently, so this case has uh, had some interesting uh you know, turns, uh, two law enforcement officials uh, recently signed sworn affidavits uh, supporting everything that you're talking about today, and I've read these as well. Um, so do you believe that uh, this case is starting to um, kind of swing in your direction, as it were? I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, before, I did not, because mm -hmm. everything in Tarrant County, and they kind of believed everything that she said, and yeah. the big thing is not in my county and protective orders. So they wouldn't listen to me about anything but whenever I left Fort Worth, I moved back to Abilene and she followed me here. That's when she started coming down here in Abilene. They don't put up with that. Mm -hmm. And they went after her whenever they found the tracker. Yeah, Taylor County. And so she recently uh, was charged with a uh, class A misdemeanor for unlawfully installing a tracking device. Again, this is uh, through the DA's office in, in Taylor County. And of course, we want to always emphasize that, um, you know, criminal charges do not mean you're guilty. Um, but she has been recently charged. And, you know, again, you know, that along with the affidavits, um, do, you, do you see hopefully some change in, the, in your Tarrant County family court uh, prospects? I hope so. Um, yeah. There's a 10 year protective order on me. Yes. And, and I hope that that goes away because everything she said, it was all just fabricated. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't able to prove it because I didn't know I was supposed to have an attorney. I tried mm -hmm. to do it all myself. So hopefully mm -hmm. now I can fight that because they see that it's not me, it's her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of evidence on your side now. Um, how are the protective orders used against you in, um, in family court and what kind of hardships has that created for you in general? You have a child with this, uh, with this woman. Yes, we have a 12 year old son. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't go to the house. Um, mm -hmm. when I, whenever I try to go to see him at school, she shows up. Sometimes she, I would drive down there to see him for maybe 15 minutes and her car would be parked at the school. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why it was just there. Mm -hmm. And it was, I know if uh, she knew I was coming or I would show up and she would be leaving or showing up as I was leaving and she would follow me. So mm -hmm. as far as the court is concerned, I'm still the guilty one because I actually, the two charges that she brought against me, I actually pled guilty to because the attorney told me to, he said, plead guilty and we'll come back later and fight them. And then later on, he said, no, you misheard me. You misunderstood it. You can't fight these now. Well, I wouldn't have ever pled guilty then because I didn't do them. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't do any of the things she said. Mm-hmm. So I can't see my son. I can't. I'm supposed to be able to call my son, but she changed his number. Uh, she won't give me the new number. I don't mm-hmm. have any contact with her whatsoever. Um, everything is me, 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 me. It's all me because they think that I'm the one who's doing all of the stuff. So I'm just kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what to do. Sure. And you're still in a tough situation. Um, we've seen this playbook before in Tarrant County where these uh, TROs um, and, um, peti- you know, these protective orders are, are used um, often on um, just um, hearsay, you know, people saying things. And it can really be used to separate parents from children, uh, loving parents such as yourself from children, which is unfortunate. Um, having been there, through everything you've been through and you, you still have a, a fight ahead of you, what would you like to say to the, the judges um, who placed a, um, a protective order against you and, and law enforcement who at many times um, did not believe you? Uh, what would you like to say to them if you could? I know that they go after men a lot more, but it's, it's not always us. And, and there's always two sides to a story, sometimes three. Mm-hmm. But look at the whole picture. Call before you put a warrant out for someone before you put a protective order out on someone, listen to everything yeah. because I read everything, every conversation that she and I had, because I, I knew that there was some narcissism there. So I was trying to protect myself, mm-hmm. but I all of this and nobody's ever listened to it. Mm-hmm. And if they did, they would, they would realize that something's wrong mm-hmm. and that I'm, I'm clearly not the aggressor. So I would like to tell them, yeah. Listen to both sides. Don't just go off what she's saying because she's claiming domestic violence. Because I have probably five recordings of her saying, you know, you never, there was never any domestic violence. You never did anything. You never did that. But then she goes to them and says, he did this. And they immediately believe her. Mm-hmm. So I, I would like for them to just listen to mm-hmm. both sides. Okay. Well said. Um, I want to close by just um, saying that I did reach out to your um, your wife for comment uh, this morning and uh, recorded the conversation. And um, while I was talking to her, someone, uh, a gentleman butted in the conversation and um, said, quote, don't start your shit with me, end quote. And when I asked what his name was, um, he said, you'll see soon enough. And so later today, I'm going to be filing a police report for uh, threats. And um, it, it just... I was not expecting that from, from that phone call. But anyway, she declined to comment, I'll just say. And I did reach out to her, um, giving her the opportunity to pr- present her side. And I ended up having my life threatened. So, um, okay. but, but Chad, uh, we wish you the best. I know you have a child. It's, it can be very painful to be separated from your child. Um, again, we just, you know, you, you have our, our thoughts and prayers. And we, we can tell you're a good dad. And there are a lot of good dads out there who are going through this. So thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Our pleasure.